Hey, Faith Church family. You know, lots of weeks I say to you, thanks for joining us. But maybe the better thing I say this week is thank you for letting us into your home for a few minutes. Wherever you are, wherever you're watching, whoever you're watching with, it's so good to do church together. Over the last week, we've heard some really cool stories, some creative stories about how you are watching church. We've heard stories of kids dancing in the living room to worship music, stories of small groups meeting together virtually and watching the service together. It's so good to do church. You know, the Apostle Paul writes in the Bible, he's in prison and he writes, I'm in chains, but the Word of God is not chained. And I thought this week, okay, I'm quarantined, but the Word of God is not quarantined. It is active. Jesus is alive and we get to worship Him today. You know, churches all over the Lehigh Valley and all over the world are joining together to worship this big God who's bigger than any church building. And we get to be a part of that. So wherever you are, your living room, your dining room, whatever, sing loud as we worship together. Lean in as we learn and study together. I'm so glad to be with you today. Would you pray with me? God, we know that you are good and the Bible says that if we stop praising you the rocks will worship you God may we never stop praising you today we invite you God into our our homes our living rooms our dining rooms wherever we're watching from we invite you into this place to speak to our heart to encourage us and God I pray that across the world as your church worships you that you are glorified it's through Christ we pray. Amen. Come, let us bow at his feet. He has done great things. See what our Savior has done. See how his love overcomes. He has done great things. He has done great things. Freedom, awaken the light. 
conquer the grave. You free every captive and break every chain. Oh God, you have done great things. We dance, you're free. I got 
We've all been in a place in our lives where we put our hope in something or someone other than God. And in Deuteronomy, it says this, you worship man-made gods of wood and stone, which you cannot see or hear or eat or smell. But if from there you seek the Lord your God, 
you will find him if you seek him with all your heart and with all your soul. God is not far away. He's not far away at all. I think sometimes we, we have this false sense that he's far away, but it, it's because that's where we put him. We distance ourselves from him, but it's just not the truth. He's here. He's here right now. He's with each and every single one of us. So let's take steps towards him, not away from him. You know, he wants to hear about what's going on in our, in our minds, our anxieties, our worries. He wants us to give our hearts to him and to just talk with him. So I encourage you today, just go somewhere alone. Well, stay in your house, but go into a room alone and shut the door and just sit there and talk to God, talk out loud to him. He is our Prince of Peace. He is our comforter. And we have confidence in that today.
we don't have to be afraid because you're here with us. You're our protector. God, you are the calm in the storm. I pray that we would put our hope in you, not in anything else, not the news, not politics, not a false sense of comfort and control. God, that we would put our hope in you and you alone. Would you protect us? We love you so much. And we pray all of these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much for worshiping with us. Howdy, everyone. Thanks so much for welcoming, welcoming us into your home today. This is certainly unusual and extraordinary. I mean, I think we are working our way as a country, as a community, as a world through unchartered territories. I mean, these things that are, we're being asked to do and experiencing as a country today, just crazy. Told to stay away from everyone, social distancing has now become the norm, and yet we have access to unlimited information, news and sort of info from around the globe, technology at our fingertips, and we're seeing just how real this virus is. I mean, there's no mistaking that this is real and it's dangerous, and that causes each one of us to have all kinds of thoughts and feelings. I mean, if you're awake right now, you're thinking, is this virus going to impact me? Is this virus going to impact my family, the people I love, friends in my circle, and, and way beyond the medical parts of this situation? We all know that already our lives, our learning, schools, work, Rhythms that have just been normal for so long are not normal, and we have no idea how long this will go for, which just leaves all of us just feeling a traffic jam of questions, doubts, feelings. So as, as a pastor, you know, that's what I am, it's what I do, I, I want to come into your home today, into your kitchen or living room, wherever you're watching this, and I want to give you encouragement. I, I want to give you hope. And I could tell all of you, hey, everybody, don't be afraid. But I can't say that. You know, I'm just a normal guy like you. I'm a husband and a father. And I'm looking at all of this, and I've got questions, and I've got doubts. And if I give in to my fears right now, I'm talking to an empty room, to a camera. This is weird. This is hard. This is different. I'm not sure what's going on and what exactly I'm supposed to say to make anyone feel better. It would be easy for me to get up in front of you and say, hey, everyone, you know what you should do? You should replace your fear with faith. And let me give you 10 easy things you can do right now to change your fear into faith. But that's not what I'm going to do. What God has been whispering to me to tell you today is to teach you about God, to teach you his character, because with all the news and all the noise, all the constant change 
and all the chaos. Who's talking about God? I mean, where is God right now? How is God responding to this pandemic? How does he want us to respond to this pandemic? And so what I'm going to ask you to do is lean in with me for just a few moments and learn. To turn on your brain and tune out the noise to learn and think about God. Because for me personally, the only source of encouragement and peace that I've discovered is through understanding who God is. So will you pray with me? God, right now we pause, wherever we are, wherever we're listening. We ask that you would quiet the noise, quiet our homes, quiet our hearts, quiet us now, and allow us to think and to focus to absorb and to learn. You have, God, the ability to reach into every heart and every home and communicate just exactly what you want individuals to hear. So be with us and teach us, I pray, through Christ our Lord. Amen. If you have your Bibles, jump with me to Acts chapter 17. So I know that means you might have to run and go get a copy. Go send your kids to grab their little kid Bibles. You know, grab a paper copy, an electronic copy. We're in Acts chapter 17. And we started in Acts chapter 17 last week looking at this statement, these lessons, teachings that Paul gives in a city called Athens. If you didn't see the talk from last week, I'd encourage you to watch that this week because today builds on that Paul is talking to a group of people in this city of Athens who are really sophisticated, and they're a group of people that are trying to sort out life just like you. They're looking at science and looking at philosophy and looking at religion and trying to understand the world just like we're trying to understand our world today. And the comments that Paul makes 2,000 years ago are super relevant for us. So quick review, starting in verse 24. Paul says, the God who made the world and everything in it is the Lord of heaven and earth and does not live in temples built by human hands and God is not served by human hands as if he needed anything. Rather, he himself gives everyone life and breath and everything else. Remember, God is creator and Lord and that means he has unlimited power and unlimited authority. I mean, just imagine not having any limits on your power and your authority. If that was true of you today, what would you use your unlimited power and authority to do? For me, I'd probably give a raise to everyone cleaning and stocking our supermarkets. I probably would give disease immunity to all our healthcare workers today. I probably would use my power and authority to zap a lot of people on television who are a bunch of windbags with permanent laryngitis. I probably would use my power and authority to stop this virus. How does God use his power and authority? God uses his power and authority to give us real choices, right? He he could have made us robots, but he didn't. He gave us real choices. We are independent creatures that have real choices. And we can use those choices in a million different ways. To laugh or to cry. To mourn or to dance. To organize or to build. To hurt or to heal. He made us with the ability to choose in his image. And God wired us to seek loving connections. Part of giving us life and breath, creating us in his image, he wired us to seek loving connections. God could have forced us to love him, but that's not love, right? Love is always a choice, something we choose. So he wired us to love him, but he doesn't force love. He wired us to love and connect with other people. We're kind of like devices, Right, So you know when these devices are designed, whatever electronic you have, a phone or a tablet, it's designed that when you come into a new space to kind of look for Wi-Fi wherever it is, 
It's designed to seek connection. You are designed to seek connection, to seek love. It's how God wired you and me. It's one of the reasons this whole social isolation thing is so difficult because we are wired to connect. And when we don't find connection, it's almost like our computer inside is kind of struggling to find where is it? Where is connection? Where is love? Where is connection? Where is love? It's how God made us. He made us to love and to seek connection. So God uses his unlimited power and authority to give us real choices, and he wires us to seek loving connections. Now let's look further, verse 26, why he made us this way. Verse 26 says, from one man God made all the nations that they should inhabit the whole earth. From one man he made all nations that we might inhabit the whole earth. So We learn this in Genesis, that God made the world, everything we see, and he said it was good. And God made humans, male and female, in his likeness, and said, this is very good. And now Paul's saying, from this one man and one woman, every nation under heaven exists. Now, I know some of you right now are going, really, Adam and Eve Garden of Eden, that fairy tale stuff. I believe in science. I believe in evolution and natural selection, but really stop and think about it for a moment. Why does every human across the entire world and across every generation, why do we all have ears and eyes? Why do we all have mouths and noses? If we're not all made from the same family, then why do we all look and act and sound alike. Now, certainly within species, there are adaptations that have occurred. So dogs adapt and become different kinds of dogs. Bird adapt and become different kind of birds. People adapt and become different types of people, and yet we all have variations and we all eat and drink and sing and sound and smell and talk and act alike. Is this really all just random or is it designed? The Bible teaches, and I believe, that we all come from one starting source. And if you don't believe that, then how can this one virus that started somewhere else in the world rapidly cross all borders and come and impact us here today? Did you notice that dogs are not stockpiling toilet paper? Humans are. Because we're all a part of the same family which God started Father, Son, Holy Spirit, in their love, they created a family. Just like when couples get together and in their love, they start a family. God did the same thing from one man. He made all the nations that they should inhabit the whole earth. And when he created these first humans, Genesis 1.28 tells us, he said to these humans, be fruitful, increase in number, fill the earth and subdue it, rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, and over every living creature that moves on the ground. Fill, populate the world, and subdue the earth means we're God's caretakers. He's like, here's my world. I want you to take care of it. Innovate, organize, beautify, cultivate, enjoy this world with science and art and music and athletics enjoy, use this place. We're not to abuse this world or misuse this world. We're not to abuse people or misuse people. God says, this is my world. You are my people. And in my unlimited authority and in my unlimited power, I give you real choices to make. With every life and every breath, you have real choices to serve God or to not serve God, to serve people or to not serve people, to serve yourself or to not serve yourself. From one man he made all the nations, verse 26, that we should inhabit the whole earth and he marked out their appointed times in history and the boundaries of their lands. He marked out their appointed times 
and the boundaries of their lands. Think of any leader, any innovator, any artist, any athlete. If they've experienced any level of success in this world, it's because they are purposeful and they have a vision. God is purposeful and has a vision behind everything he does. He is strategic, the most strategic being that ever existed. So not only did he use his unlimited power and authority to create this world, but he put a plan together for this world, and God created the world with each chapter and each character in mind. This is not random. He brings people on the scene and off the scene. He causes leaders to rise and he causes leaders to fall. And people have real experiences with real choices on real pages and real chapters. None of this is random. So, what's that mean? It means there was a day hundreds of years ago where God was like, Joan of Arc is going to be born today. And she's going to have real choices. And Joan of Arc used her real choices to rescue France. God says, oh, Leonardo da Vinci is going to be born on this day. And Leonardo da Vinci used his real choices to paint a picture, the Mona Lisa, so that we would all look at. God says, on this day, Hitler is going to be born, and Hitler's going to use his real choices to do evil in this world. But on this day, people like Churchill and FDR and Truman are going to rise up to use their abilities to end this evil. He knew that the Beatles were going to be born on a certain day and they were going to grow to learn to play the guitar and sing these crazy cool new songs that are going to change the world musically forever. He knew that Bill Gates and Steve Jobs would show up on planet Earth and they would use their real choices to innovate in ways that would change everything. You see, this world is one big long story where God uses His authority and power to write chapters and characters and give each one of our characters real choices. Some people will do great things with their choices. and Some people will do horrific things with their choices. There will be beauty and tragedy on every page and every chapter. Moments of absolute greatness and mo moments of atrocities and everything in between because our loving and unlimited God gives humanity real choices. From one man he made all the nations, that we should inhabit the whole earth, and he marked out their appointed times in history and the boundaries of their lands. Verse 27 tells us why. God did this so that we would seek him and perhaps reach out to him and find him though he is not far from any one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being. As some of your own prophets have said, we are his offspring. Why are you alive now? In 2020, why do you exist? You're alive today so that you can seek and find God. That's why you're here. He made you. He knows you. He put you on this page, in this chapter. He knows and is not surprised by the coronavirus. He knows that we are going to live through, in, among this virus, this global pandemic. God knows that during this chapter, some of us will not make it. Others, most, will make it. There will be lives that are born into the middle of this, and this will change all of us. God knows this. He's not surprised by it, but none of this changes who He is and what He's like and how powerful and unlimited is His authority and care for us to give us real choices every day. He knows that this season is your season to seek and find Him. He knows that this set of circumstances, this group of people, this family, this economic circumstance, this time in life is the setting for you to seek and to find Him. 
He is not far from you. He's close. And you might ask, well, why would I seek and find God? Because when you choose God, you have access to His unlimited power, His unlimited patience, His unlimited peace, His unlimited joy. I mean, we are running around our country trying to find answers, trying to find supplies, trying to find vaccines. We are running, seeking, longing, hoping. God is the source of all power and all peace. Don't you need today a God who's patient, slow to anger, abounding in love, forgiving? Don't you need access to peace? Peace between you and God? Peace inside? Joy inside? Don't you need access to enough power to get through the day? Some of you have toddlers and young kids. You need power to make it through the day. God is the source of these things. And when we choose to seek and follow and trust and obey and find Him, we gain access to His unlimited resources. He has put us in this place and time that we might seek Him and find Him to be the source and satisfaction to all our longings all our struggles, all our need for forgiveness and hope. If you're still listening to me right now, you might have already muted or turned me off. I get it. I mean, there's like a thousand questions you might ask right now. I think one of the greatest questions I have for God is, why are you hiding? I mean, in some ways, I feel like God plays this cosmic game of hide-and-seek. Remember playing hide-and-seek when you were a kid? Some of you are like, I played hide-and-seek 30 times already this morning with my kids. But if you remember playing hide-and-seek when you couldn't ever find the person, it wasn't fun, right? Is God playing a cosmic game of hide-and-seek, but we'll never find Him? That's what it feels like sometimes. Like, where are you, God? Why do I have to seek you? Why are you hiding? Why can't you just show up? Here's the answer from my perspective. If God showed up in his full power, we would be overwhelmed by fear, not overtaken by love. I mean, process this for a moment. If God has unlimited power and unlimited authority, if he would just show up, in my living room today, if he would just show up in the Lehigh Valley or show up in Kansas or in China, if he would just show up, he would blow us away. I mean, when you read the Bible, any time an angel, angels are beings that are hanging out with God all the time, any time an angel shows up and a human sees an angel, they fall on their face as though dead. That's just an angel. If the God of the universe who is perfect and just and holy in all his ways, powerful and strong and loving, if he just showed up in your life, he would scare you to death. And he loves us way too much to overpower us with love. So he is not hiding. He gives us glimpses of himself through a sunrise. He gives us glimpses of his power by keeping planets in orbit and not knocking into each other. God gives us glimpses of his power through something like gravity, because if God would withdraw his hand, we'd all get sucked out into oblivion. He gives us glimpses of his power in the birth of a child. He gives us glimpses of his power in buds blooming in spring. He gives us glimpses of his power. He's not hiding, but he veils his power and authority to draw us into a loving relationship and not a fearful one. He gives us glimpses of his power and authority veiled in the person of Jesus Christ, that Jesus shows up on planet earth as a baby, as a Jewish carpenter, 
as someone who laughed and cried and was like us in every way, but without sin. When Jesus walked on planet earth, he spoke the very words of God. So to see Jesus and to hear Jesus is to see and hear the heart of God without being blown away and overpowered. And Jesus doesn't demand people follow me. He invites people. He says, come follow me. Believe in me. He is gentle and kind. He says, come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He doesn't demand, command, overpower us, but invites us to trust him. God's writing a story called Earth He's writing you into this chapter in time, and he gives you real choices in this life. You're on earth today to choose to love or to hate, to choose to use your resources for yourself or for others, to choose to use what God has given you for good or not good, and he loves you way too much to force himself upon you. But instead, he invites you he invites you into spaces and into interactions with people. There are tragic days and beautiful days, sunny days and rainy days, and everything in between so that you would ask the question, where are you, God? And so that you would seek him and you would find him because he is not far from anyone, but he won't force himself on you. You might think, if God really has unlimited power, and he really has unlimited authority, why is he allowing this pandemic to happen? Why are these things going on in our world today? And if that's how he's choosing to use his power and authority, then I'm not sure I want to connect to him. I'm not sure if I want to connect to him, which I think is a great point, but what if what if this story called My Life on Earth, what if this chapter, this life that you're living, whether you're 10 years old or 30 years old or 70 years old right today, what if this is just one chapter of a larger eternal story? What if there's so much more, if things are so much bigger and greater, and this life is short and eternity is long? I mean, what if this little piece of red rope is your life? And this little section of rope is everything from your birth to your death. And right here in the middle is coronavirus. Right here are times where you've been happy and rejoicing and times you've been depressed and anxious and everything in between. What if this chapter of your life, which seems long and seems hard, what if this is part of a greater story that's going to go on and on and on and on and on and eternally on and on and on and on and on and on forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever. And God's like, you have this part of time called my chapter on planet earth. And there are going to be great days and there are going to be hard days. There's going to be seasons of doubt and season of struggle, season of joy and seasons of peace. But during this one life, you have a choice to choose and trust God, to seek Him and find Him because He's not far from us. But if you choose to reject Him in this season of life, if you choose to put your hope in yourself in your money, in your education, in your thoughts, in your philosophy, in self-determination or mysticism, in distant thoughts of God or not God, if you choose to ignore Him and reject Him and follow your feelings, in this chapter, the Bible says this chapter determines the rest. What if in this chapter you choose God? In this chapter, you choose God, you get Him forever. But if in this chapter you choose to reject Him, then you get no God, no light, no love forever. And what if you're on 
this day, this season, this moment in time that you might choose to trust Him, seek Him, find Him, follow Him. You're going to discover His peace and His life that will last forever. Let me get hyper-practical with you for just a few moments. If you wanted to seek and connect with God today, what do you do? What, like, what does that look like? A couple things. You connect to God by talking to Him and listening to Him. I mean, this is so basic. If He's really unlimited in power and authority and He can hear and knows everything, when was the last time you talked to Him? When was the last time you talked to Dad, the Father of all, the one who made our family? When you're struggling, when you're anxious, when you're afraid, when you're not sure how you're going to pay your bills, if you just lost your job, if they're cutting your wages, maybe you just entered the hospital and you're struggling with something health-wise, do you talk to Dad about those things? He says, cast all your cares on me because I care for you. Talk to him. Bring them your anxiety and fear and frustration that you're stuck at home with your family and you don't like your family. Talk to him about what you feel, and what you're thinking, but listen to him too. The Bible says, be still and know that he is God. So that means turn off the television, put your smartphone away, stop listening to the news for a moment, be deliberate to quiet yourself. Find a quiet place in your house. Go on a walk by yourself and just say, God, I want to hear you. Please speak to me and watch what he does. Talk to God and listen to God and watch how that draws you close to God. He is not far from you and he says, come near to me and I will come near to you. Seek me and you will find me. You want to connect to God? You choose during this season to learn about Him. I mean, there are so much information going out about all kinds of things. Will you make deliberate decisions today, this week, to say, I want to learn about God. I want to learn the heart of God, the character of God, how God works, who He is, what He's like, who I am and what I'm like. Would you choose to learn about Him? So here's a couple resources I want to point your attention to. If you're opening up your Bible, I encourage you to read the Gospel of John. Read the Gospel of John. Read the letters that John wrote towards the end of your Bible. John was Jesus' best friend on earth, so he explains who Jesus is in really helpful ways. Read the Gospel of John. If you're looking for some just super simple way to hear the voice of Jesus, there's this great little devotional by Sari Young called Jesus Calling. I encourage you. It's great for your kids and for your family. If you're just starting to learn about Jesus and who he is and what he's like, great resource. Tim Keller writes an incredible book called The Reason for God, which is super helpful if you want to explore at an intellectual, philosophical, theological lens of God. If you want to go into the deep end of the pool, Tim Keller and all his resources will help you immensely, and I would highly recommend to you The Bible Project. It's a website and a podcast with really cool, engaging videos, information about the Bible, and how God's writing this story in the Bible from beginning to end, and how Jesus works his way through each and every part. Really fun for you with teenagers and as a family to look at thebibleproject.com. Org. Lean into learning about Jesus during this season. And the last thing I would highly recommend is you connect to God by trusting Jesus. Trusting that He is in your present and He's in your future. Why do I say that? One of the helpful thoughts I saw this week about fear, someone said that fear is not seeing Jesus in your future. That if you imagine the rest of today, and you imagine the rest of this week, and you imagine the rest of your life, and you imagine the afterlife, and Jesus is nowhere to be found, that's fear. 
But if Jesus is in your heart and your mind today, if he's present in the moment and in your future, then that's why you don't have to be afraid. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, forever. He says, I am with you always, even to the very end of the age, that nothing can separate you from my love. So if you have Jesus in your heart today, imagine him into your heart. Talk to him. Engage with him. He's here. He's present, and he's present in your future. He holds all things together. Run to Jesus. Trust in Jesus. Obey Jesus. And if you have yet to put your trust in Jesus, you don't have to do anything more than to talk to him. If you imagine your future and you go, I don't see Jesus anywhere because you don't know him yet, just open your heart to him. Talk to him. Tell him I'm sinful. Tell him I'm a train wreck. Tell him you're messed up and you need him. Invite him into your life. He will come in and change you and give you hope and peace. If you don't have a relationship with Jesus and you're curious about having a relationship with Jesus, please contact us, email us, connect with us on social media or on our website. We'd love to help you have a relationship with Jesus today. What then shall we say in response to all these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son but gave him up for us all, how will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life Neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. With that confidence, would you pray with me? Father, we come before you now and we ask you to meet us in this moment. God, we ask you in the powerful name of Jesus to stop this virus now. We ask that you would be with our government officials. We ask that you would be with those who are researching cures. We ask that you would sustain our medical professionals. We ask that you would calm our country and world. We ask that you would help us to see that you are here and you are close, that you love us with an everlasting love, and you can calm our fears and give us peace and hope now and forevermore. May we call out to you. May we seek you. May we find you. May we lean on you. May we fall on you. May we call on you and give you our fears and our doubts. Would you empower your sons and daughters to be patient, to persevere during this difficult season? Would you empower your sons and daughters to be love and light in a dark world that's scared and frightened? Mobilize us as a people to love and to serve and to care and to connect. Please help us, God. Please strengthen us. Please encourage us that Jesus is in our present and in our future. Therefore, we will not fear. We trust you. We love you. In your Son's powerful name, amen. You know, right now we are going to ask you to be generous. You know, I know there are so many ways this is all causing all of us to be frightened, including financially being nervous. And so it would be easy to think, why would I give now to the church? I get it. And yet I would ask you, we do what we do and we can sustain our spiritual community with hope and truth and love and prayer and care as you give. So would you consider giving? You can text any amount. You can visit faithchurchlv.com and give. You certainly can use snail mail to send in 
gold, silver, whatever you want, please continue to give and enable us to do what we do so that we can continue to love and serve our community. It means a big deal. Thank you. It's an act of your trust and worship to God. And also, just one note, obviously we want you to still connect in your small groups. You just can't physically connect, so use the virtual tools that your small group leaders have to continue to engage and serve one another during these critical moments. Community is everything. So lean into your small groups. Now Pastor Brad is here. You know, church, what we really want you to know right now is that we're here to serve you. We're here to pray for you. If there's any way that we can help you, we want to know. And so would you take a minute, would you fill out the connection card? It's on the homepage of your app. We're also gonna drop it into all the various chat rooms where we're streaming. Would you take a minute and fill that out? We want to hear how we can serve you. This whole worship experience, as well as the sermon, will be posted online, so you can view them again throughout the week, and please share them. Of course, we'll see you on Real Talk this week. And Pastor Joe and I, if we're able, we're gonna go live again on Facebook and on Instagram. Please make sure you're checking out our website where we're posting updates on how we're navigating the coronavirus as we listen to our government officials and healthcare officials. We love you. We, we miss you. We can't wait to worship with you again. Be safe this week and have a great week.